the number one challenge that most people have is they feel like they are too busy in order to be consistent on YouTube. They feel like they have too many things to do and too many hats to wear. And so today we're gonna dive into a lot of the techniques and the different things that I have done in order to help me stay consistent on YouTube while also having all of the other things that I have to do within my life. All right? So my work has been featured in a bunch of different publications since 2017. I love talking about organization. I love talking about systems because I really do that once you get organized, once you get organized, you are able to achieve so much more. You're able to do more. You're able to get more profit. You're just able to do more within your life as a whole, which is why I love talking about this topic. So these are... I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on YouTube. I try my best to be consistent on all three places, but it is called The Organized Money. And with all of my platforms, I have a system with how I stay on top of each one of them. And that is what we're going to talk about today. We are gonna have some questions at the very end, but so just write them down as we're going through them, okay? So in order for your brand to be successful, you have to have what I call be a CEO. It has to be a CEO. And we're gonna talk about all three of these areas, which is consistency. We're gonna talk about the basic things of consistency, which most advice people give. But I'm also gonna dive into some additional things about consistency that you may not be thinking about. We're also gonna talk about how to make it engaging, your content engaging, and how to organize that content. So let's dive into how we are going to be consistent. First thing that you need to know, this is traditional advice, everyone gives it, but you have to look at your channel like it's a television show. What time does your television show come on? My favorite show was How to Get Away with Murder. I love that show. Came on every Thursday night at the exact same time. I knew what time it was coming on. If it was seven o'clock, that's the time my show came on. If you have a YouTube channel, you have to think about your channel the exact same way. What time does your video go live? And it has to remain consistent in order for your audience to know when they need to show up. It's great if it's in your banner. It's great if you're able to communicate this. I always tell my audience, every Tuesday and Sunday, you are going to get a new video from me by 4 p.m. Central Time. And just being able to communicate that and let them know, they know that's the time that they need to show up and come to my channel. So first thing that you need to know is what time is your video and what days are your video going to show up. So let's go through the traditional advice really, really quickly. You wanna have your goals, of course. You wanna have your why. Why are you doing this? You wanna keep a list of consistent ideas. I went to another session where I believe he said he had 500 ideas. Mine was only 50, which I was like, ooh, I need to rev mine up. But have your ideas, have a rolling list of ideas. Make sure you're reading so that you always have a bunch of different ideas that you can have. Have a scripting day, have a recording day, have a research day, filming, editing, all of that. You definitely need all of these. But now let's go into some non-traditional advice. First thing is you've got video is not going to be the one that launches your platform. Most YouTubers have about 10 to 15 videos that are sustaining their channel, mine included. There are about 10 videos that really everyone, all of the traffic is driven in by those 10 videos. And the other ones are just there to remain consistent. I am just focusing on the process. I am just putting out content that I love, that I believe other people love, and it is about the process. It is not about every single video getting 100,000 views. Because the moment you start to focus in on just the views and how many people are watching each and every video, you will lose the, the moment or the love of the process. So you have to have fun, you have to love what you're doing, and you have to just want to talk about whatever topic you're talking about. It has to come from a place of, I just love this topic and I just want to share it, even if 
everybody doesn't watch this particular video. You will have your core videos that people love. I have specific videos that I know this is what my audience wants. And then I have other videos that I'm just doing because this is something I want to share. And there's a balance between the two, and that's how your channel will grow consistently. The next thing that you need to know is you have to anticipate the dip. Growth is not steady, meaning that every time you put out a video, your channel just grows and it grows and it grows. That's not how it usually happens. You have one or two videos, like I was saying, and your channel shoots up and then you kind of remain stagnant for a little bit, and then you have another set that shoots it up. So you have to anticipate the dip in your channel. Anticipate your analytics not being as amazing as they once were when you first posted that very first video that did really well. And the reason why is because it will help you not to get discouraged when the dip happens or when the growth isn't the exact same. And if you're focusing in on the process and you're anticipating, okay, things aren't shooting as going as high as they once were, okay, what can I do differently? Maybe I can use this time to experiment. I always love using stagnant seasons as a time to experiment to see what else is going to work. Let me try something else. Let me see if my audience likes this. And it gives you a, a great way to kind of go up and just try different things and not take it too, too seriously where you are just always looking for constant growth. The next thing that you have to do is know that motivation is a myth. You're not gonna wanna do it some days. I have woken up and not wanted to record anything. And the, the best way to get out of this is to make the process as easy as you possibly can if you are not motivated. So what does that mean? That means that I will lay out my clothes. I will decide what the, I'll set up the camera the night before. I'll set up the lights. I will um, write out my script word for word. I will have every single barrier that will stop me from filming out of the way. I will even plan breakfast, when I'm gonna eat for lunch with snacks, I will have it in my desk. Anything that I feel like might stop me from recording, I will take care of that ahead of time. And the reason why is because if you find, when you're not motivated, when you don't feel like doing something, any little thing from the dishes will stop you, <laughs> right? Who's like, oh, you know what, I gotta do laundry. <laughs> I, I've done it to where I'm like, I have something else, and oh, something else come up with the kids, I need to clean up their room. I will think of any little thing possible, but the minute you're removing as many barriers as you can, taking away all of those decisions, then it makes it easier for you to stick to it. And then you'll just, oh, uh, let me just hurry up and get this out of the way. Let me just film this real quick, because there's no reason for me not to, all right? How do we engage? So after you have figured out how you're going to be consistent, you removed all your barriers, you have um, you have your list, you have your script, you have everything. Now let's talk about the content in particular because that content has to be engaging. It has to be something that people want to look at on a consistent basis. So first thing, educational content. Majority of us are going to probably be creating educational content. We are trying to teach our audience something. So these are the types of educational content that I will do. It's usually statistics. I will also do quotes. I'll do lists, like the top 10 ways to do this, or the top 10 ways to save money, the top five ways this. Or I will do some type of video where I'm just talking to my audience. Now, as you can see, I put up an example for each one of these. This was a quote that I got from the book, The Author of Rich Habits. So this is Tom Corley's book, Rich Habits. And I just pulled this directly from the book. 65% of self-made millionaires has three streams of income. Simple. Just a regular statistic. Look at the engagement on this one. 665 likes, nine comments, 84 shares, which shares are really wonderful, and 101 saves. And it's just a quote. It's just something that I had read in a book, and I just posted it. I tweeted it, and I just screenshot the tweet and posted it on Instagram. 
So it's something like that that you can do, and you can do quotes, you can do statistics, lists, things like that is educational. It's something that's just teaching you something, but it's engaging because it's educational. And it's something that I might want to share and put in my stories and tell other people about. The other type of content that you want to create is entertaining content, entertaining a content. This is content that makes people feel something. I'm going to feel emotional. I'm going to want to talk about this. So I did this one during 2020, and this is when COVID first hit. So this was around March or April. It was April, April 22nd. So I put COVID-19, my monthly budget, gas zero, clothing zero, nails zero, hair zero, travel zero, groceries $1,709. <laughs> and it's basically just relating to what everybody else was experiencing at that time. Everybody's grocery bills had skyrocketed because our kids were home, they were eating us out of house and home, we were eating, everybody was just stuck inside, and it was relatable. And so this is something where you can share a story. This could be a personal story or a story about your kids or something like that. You could also do memes. Memes work really well if you see something that's really funny and you want to share it and it makes up people emotional and something just going on with reality. Like this was the pandemic. So it's COVID-19, so I'm just sharing what real life is for me right now. So when you are trying to think of something that's entertaining, you can think of something that's going on with you, something that's going on with a friend, something that's going on with your kids, or if you don't want to share anything personal, then you can also go to additional stories that are outside of yourself. Maybe it's an anonymous um, post about a client of yours, or you could just do a meme, something else that you have found. But entertaining posts, and you can see with this one, 988 likes, 62 comments, 257 shares, 42 saves. The reach got 27,000, so that's 27,000 additional people that just looked at my channel or went to my Instagram just because they saw this post. And it was just something about what's going on in life right now. And the third type of content that you want to share with your audience that's going to make them engage is it's useful. So it can be educational, it can be entertaining, or it could be useful. It is something that's just going to help them out. This just helps me out of a jam. So one of the ones I love to do is books. I love to share the books that I'm currently reading. Um, and so this is one that I did also around that same time where I said, Money books that I'm reading while I'm under quarantine. We're all stuck inside. So let's use this time to read some different books. And I think I shared about five or six books that I was reading during this time. And it had 342 likes, 14 comments, 64 shares, and 187 saves. So this is just helpful. This is where you can touch on their pain points. And this is where you can share just additional things that you are doing that help you while you were in their particular shoes or their situation. So these are the types of pieces of content that you want to share. As you're being consistent, we already have that schedule. We already have those things in place. The next thing that we want to do is to make sure that our content is engaging, which means that it's educational, it's entertaining, or it's useful. So when we are talking about our, our pain points for our clients, there are a couple things that we can do. I know that you know usually it could be something that you have experienced personally when you're talking about your clients' pain points. But for me, I always like to look up different pain points that I feel like my clients might be experiencing as well. Um, so I will all, also I will always do is Google the top questions that are asked on Google. What are the top questions that people ask about budgeting? What are the top questions people ask about getting out of debt? What are the top, and Google will give you a list of a bunch of different things that people are currently asking around that particular topic. And that's a great way for you to know your client's pain points. You can literally just go down each one and do videos on each one of those. It could be a short or a long form video. Other things that you can ask is you can ask your audience. 
I love to put in my stories, I'll say, hey, what, what are you currently going through right now? Or what would you love for me to talk about? And it's an Instagram story. People will click on it. They'll ask me questions. And then I can use that to do a Q&A as well. And that's also engaging content. And then also, I will also look at what people are commenting under other social media posts. It might not be mine. But if I am on another um, person's Instagram and I see that they have a question and people are asking the same type of questions in their comments, then I'll say, oh, I can answer that. I can do a video on that as well. And I know that it'll probably be engaging because a bunch of people are asking it here as well on Instagram on someone else's post. Other just random tips is to watch your language. Um, because I, I did um, a panel a while back, and it was, it was an investor panel. And we were all, it was me and two other financial experts, and we were just talking back and forth, and we were going through all of this. There, and my husband was in the room, and we were all talking. And my husband stopped us, and he's like, yeah, I have no idea what none of y'all just said. And it's because. As financial experts, we make sense to each other, right? We know the language, but many times our audience does not. And so we have to like really find a way to talk like we're talking to a friend or just make sure that our language, we are really, really breaking it down or asking them as many questions as possible. And try your best to show your personality. This one's very challenging in the beginning on, on YouTube. I, I, can, I can't even watch my beginning videos, I'm going to be honest. Like, the very first set of videos that I did, I cringe watching myself. But it gets better over time. So even if you're saying, you know what, I don't like the way I sound just yet, just press record. You don't have to post it. You can practice for as long as you want by just pressing record and then watching it back and saying, would I watch myself do this? And if I can't watch it, then I'll say, okay, let me try it again, or let me try different aspects. And then sometimes I just post it anyway, even if I can't. So just do it. So you want to develop a strategy. This is what your audience will connect to. So your content has to be a pattern. This is why I talk about organization. People love to know what to expect. If I know that your, your channel is going to have a new episode every Tuesday and Sunday, that, that, I love that. I can add that to my planner. I can make sure that I come to your, to your channel. That I love to know exactly when you're going to do what you said you're going to do. And I love for it to feel super familiar to me. So it has to have a pattern to it. I have to know what to expect. And know that every single platform is different. So I would say go all in on one platform before you try and just post the same type to every single one. So when I first started, I was all in on YouTube. And then when I felt like I really had a good system down for YouTube, I switched over to Instagram. And then I was all in on Instagram. And then I went to TikTok. And now each platform is growing, but I didn't feel like I was pulling myself in multiple directions, trying to do everything at the same time. I gave myself time and a pattern to feel like, OK, I got this one down. It took me about three or four months. Now I can move on to the next platform. And I'm just adding things in instead of feeling like I'm trying to do it all. Remember that content marketing is not a commitment. It's a commitment, not a campaign. So you're not doing this for a short period of time. You're doing this for, a, for as long as you decide to do this. So you have to be consistent. I'm always as transparent as I can be. I'm always as honest as I can be. I try and make sure that I am seen on multiple platforms, even if I'm not there all the time. Um, and I try to be as active as possible. Don't post and ghost. Make sure you post and then you check in. See if they have comments and questions and things underneath. So now let's talk really quickly about how to organize this piece of content or these things. I love to keep a list of ideas. So I have um, a brainstorming notebook. I'm just a pen and paper type of gal. I do have some digital systems that I'm going to talk about in a second. But I love, 
I carry a brainstorming notebook with me everywhere, and I have a bunch of ideas in this notebook. I love telling people to have what I call like a commonplace notebook or just a random notebook, something small that you can keep on you at all times because you'll get random ideas. Even if you keep a list in your phone, of you'll just get random ideas throughout your day. It might be while you're in line, you're at the bank, you're doing this, you're at the post office. And to be able to quickly add those ideas to a list makes it really easy for you to stay on top of your list. So you're not trying to um, think of what you're going to post next. You also want to create a calendar. Um, this is something else that I love to do is I have a monthly calendar and I will drop in all of my ideas, all of the different things that I want to post. Here is what my October calendar looked like. Um, and so, as you can see, it's, I am posting the videos. I would tell them what classes are coming up. They are in red. And I post this to my YouTube channel. I will post this in my... Um, in my community page. I will also post it on Instagram. I will share it in my stories. I share it with my audience so they know exactly what's coming up in the month. Now, do not share your content unless you know you're going to be able to stick to it because your audience will call you out. <laughs> Mine has, the, if I miss one of these videos, they are, hey, what happened? I was looking for this video really quick so before you do this make sure you either what i like to do is have a couple of them already filmed so i know that this is going to be my content and even if it's like two two or three videos ahead of them so then that way i know that i can stick to my schedule but you you can share your schedule this is a great way to keep you accountable and to let your audience know what you are about to post if you are a digital person and you love digital things Trello is one of my favorite platforms for this. This is the free version of Trello. And what I will do is I will usually color code and add the videos or add the different things that I know I want to post. So it could be what I'm posting to YouTube will usually be in red. Sometimes I'll use different colors for Instagram or for TikTok or if I'm going to do a blog post or if it's a newsletter. This is a great way for you to organize and stay on top of all of it. And you can color code each one of them. And you can just check them off as you're doing it and it just scratches it out on the platform. I really, really love this because I love that it shows like a calendar spread so you can easily see where you are. The last thing that I have for y'all is I really want, as you are organizing, make sure you organize your actual channel itself. So this is just a couple of the things that I've done. I, I like to use playlists and one of the top playlists that I tell everyone to have is a start here playlist. Got to have a start here, right? So this is for the people who are just starting out. And then if you have different segments to your channel, like for instance, I talk a lot about planning, but I also talk a lot about budgeting. So I have a channel that is like if you're starting on a budget, it's your first time you're starting a budget. Or if you are just starting out using a paper planner, you can start here. So it's the generic start here, but then I also have additional ones that are segmented for different people who are looking for something in particular. If it's a question that you get often, if it's one of your FAQs, they're always asking this question, think about how you can make it a playlist. If you can make it a playlist, make it a playlist. The other thing that I will do is add YouTube chapters. Anybody's using chapters? Okay, a few of you. Chapters are where we just basically highlight at what point in the video you are going to be. So it could be zero to one minute is my intro. And then one minute until three minutes, I'm talking about how to create a budget. And then from three minutes to five minutes, I'm talking about how to actually set up the budget. But chapters are a great way to grow your channel. Because what most people will do, if they feel like you're not talking about what they want you to talk about, they'll just jump off of your video. But if you have chapters within your video where it tells you, okay, at five minutes, in 45 seconds, I start showing you how to actually create the budget, then I'm gonna just skip to that part. And I get to see what I actually came to see. And that's what you want. 
even if they don't watch the entire video, it's better for them to watch the part that they want and stay on a little bit longer than then for them to just leave the video altogether. The other thing that I would do is post to your community tab. The community tab is a great, great, great way to actually tell them different pieces of information. So my community tab, I will post um, just generic things. I think I posted something on how to organize like after how to organize your budget after a job loss. I have just asked them polls. I've done that there. I've talked about books that I've read. All of that just as a post on my community tab. And it's been a great way for me to like just be able to still connect and talk to my audience in between videos. So if I'm posting on Tuesdays and Sundays, well then on a Wednesday or a Thursday, I might do a random community tab post just to check in or just to tell them about the video that's coming up or to tell them about the video that I just posted. And it's a great way to still connect with them. So I'm gonna stop here and ask questions, any questions, but these are the three things that I want you to think about on a consistent basis every single time you are getting ready to post a video. All right, do I have my, my levels of consistency? Do I know exactly when I'm going to post what? Is it going to be engaging? Which area does it fall under? Is it educational? Is, it, is this useful? Is this entertainment? What am I going for now? And how did I organize it? Am I going to do paper? Am I going to do digital? If I do, what's going to be my method and my system for keeping it organized? Questions? So there are three things that I will usually do. The first thing is I always check with my audience first. Um, if there is a video that did really, really well, um, then I will say, how can I piggyback off this video? Because I already know that they love that content. So, um, and so I'll see if I can piggyback off that video and do something else additional to it. So if I don't have a video that's like on and popping, like I said, there's like 10 videos right now that's really pushing my channel. So let's say my last five videos, none of them were really, like none of those videos really did super well. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll see if I had questions on any of my other content where they have asked for something in particular. If I don't have that, then the third thing that I'll do is I will look at TubeBuddy or Google and see what is the, something that I really want to talk about right now. Every now and then I will go into trendy type topics to see what's going on in the world. But really and truly my content is more about organization as a whole and budgeting and it's pretty standard. So I usually will tailor it to my audience. And then when I'm scripting, so like I say, I'm a pen and paper person. So I usually, once I have researched that particular topic and I've decided what I want to talk about and I've decided my, um, what, I, it, what I want to say on that topic, then I will usually script it out. I do like to script word for word. I know that you know, everyone's not into that, but I, I like to script word for word because it does help me to just know exactly what I'm gonna say and I go through the videos much easier. And when I do that, I use a teleprompter app too. It's called Big View. And I use that in order to upload my scripts and then that way I can just kind of, I'm reading but I'm not really reading word for word even though I script word for word, it just helps me to be able to know how I'm going to flow. Mm -hmm, no problem. Big view, B-I-G-V-U. I have a lot of questions, so I'll just try to keep this one. Yeah. So when you got started, how did, did you start with YouTube and like, how did, did you have to post every day? Like, what, were, what was the process? So when I start, okay, so let me rewind. In 2014, I created a YouTube channel. I did not, I posted two videos and then I stopped. I just was like, ah, I don't, I don't know if I could do this. And so I got away from it. Um, and 2018, I came back. When I came back, I, I had, my, my babies were really small at the time. So I did not go full fledged into my YouTube channel. I actually started doing what I call money minutes. And I started on Instagram. 
And so it was m one minute video, because at that time, Instagram videos could only be a minute. And it was a one minute video where I was talking about money. And so I started there with my phone in front of a window because it was easy. It was just easy, real quick. And then what happened was, is as I was doing those, people started commenting and saying, oh, we went along. And then that gave me the confidence to go back to YouTube. So it, it was small steps, really. Um, but by 2018, like February, I got the confidence to go back to YouTube. And then I just became consistent from there. But start wherever you can is basically the point. Like, I wish I would have kept going in 2014, but I know that when I actually did it and I took my time and I did the small steps, it actually helped me in the long run stick with it. Let's see. Oh, this one? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my most important is my YouTube channel. And it is because um, my YouTube channel right now is the hub of basically everything that I do. So it, I have multiple things kind of going on with my YouTube channel. I sell physical products. So I sell planners. Um, and selling planners on Etsy, I also have a course. And I also have a membership. And people can do like. Uh, calls with me so I have one-on-one -on -one clients which means that my YouTube is the only spot where I do all of that where I might have a video that with all of my videos I have an action item at the end so either I am asking you to purchase you can purchase this product or you can jump into my course or you can join the membership at the end of every single video usually it's some type of call to action so that's why I consider that one the most important probably my second one is my TikTok though because I feel like TikTok is it's going fast you know and it is where I sell the most products actually but courses and every other thing that I have sells the most on YouTube. So I still consider my YouTube channel my hub, my baby. That's the one that I'm going to stick to the most. Yeah, so with my content, um, I always try, like I will usually post two videos a week. Um, one video will always be what I believe my audience wants. The other video might be an experimentation. Just depends. So I, and, and here's the thing, so many amazing things have come for me just experimenting and trying different things. When I first started out, I was only talking about money. Only talking about money. I was very like budgeting, saving, getting out of debt. That, that was my content. And then I did this random video on my planner where I was like, oh, how I use my planner to get organized. And that video right now almost has like a million views. And that one random video that I did just on a whim experimenting actually became one of the biggest videos on my channel. And it transformed my content. Because then people were asking more questions about my planning and my organization and that process even more than the budgeting. So I said, OK, well, let's see how I can talk about both. Because I love both. So I'm going to just talk about both. Now, I'll still decide, <laughs> right? So sometimes I don't feel like talking about my planner today. We're talking about money, right? But I always like to go back and forth because it's based on what they want and what I want. Well, first of all, thank you so much. Very yeah. Honest. So basically, that's number two. Like that dip is what I meant in that when I was talking about anticipate the dip. Because when you are smaller um, and you have a, a much smaller audience, 
usually there is one or two videos that's bringing in a majority of that crowd. Somebody, something has happened where it's like, okay, these are a majority of people jumping in. As you grow, though, that the percentage of people that are usually watching kind of usually remains the same. And so what we are trying to do is figure out that balance between what does this audience want to see and what do I want to create? So what I do to, in order to get out of the dip is go to the top five videos on your channel. Go to your YouTube studio, go to your analytics, look at those videos and piggyback off of those if you're trying to spark that growth again. So because there is some reason that they came to that channel and usually why they come to your channel, it's because of one of those topics. And if you do a twist on that topic, usually you'll get them re-engaged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. So I don't do it all the time. Usually I am in a season every single, so right now it is October. I am not talking about anything but my planners. It's the only thing I'm, and I'm gonna be talking about that until January, possibly February. And that's because usually I have seasons where I am doing some, so every single product of mine is dedicated to a quarter. And that particular quarter, so the last quarter of the year is always planning season for me because everybody's getting ready to get organized for the new year. And so that's what I'm usually focusing on then. And then I probably won't focus on um, coaching until like the middle of next year. So it's, it's not the same. It's different calls to actions, but it just depends on what I'm launching at that particular time. That's usually how I decide. And when it comes to short form content, I... Shorts for me are a great way to pull people into your long form content. So I like to use shorts that way. I usually will take, if I have five tips in a video, I will take one of those five and I'll do a short on it. Now I know that you can clip down the video in order to make it fit shorts. I don't really care for that too much. I usually will just quickly re-record because of the way that they usually look. I just prefer to re-record them. However, if that works for you, just clipping it down, you can definitely do that. But having a way where you're just saying, oh, this is one of five ways. If you want the other four, head over to my YouTube channel. I just posted a video on this. My, yeah, my favorite is around uh, 10 minutes, um, 8 to 10, mainly because of YouTube monetization. <laughs> that eight minute mark gets them to put, they get to put in like two ads into each one, so you get paid more off of the longer form. So usually around eight minutes. Oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, just to follow up to that, like, so if you have a 10 minute video, do you usually put one mid roll ad? Or like, what, what's the frequency? Like every five minutes? So I only do, I do one begin one mid roll, yes. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yes, so on YouTube Studio, there is a section where you can look up your audience and when they're on. Uh, when they're the most active. For my audience, for some reason, Tuesday at around 3, 4 o'clock, that's when they're on, and they're on Sunday mornings. So those were the days that I chose for it. So it, but if you, and I can show it to you on the phone once we get out, but it's under your studio, you can see when they're the most active. So I, I usually will set up um, I'll do it for 20 minutes at the beginning of my day. So, and then I shut it down because, I mean, I would just be on there all day. Yeah. Uh -huh. In terms of compensation, um, when you create content, do you put content that I know to my channel or do you just create the same content for everyone? I will post the same content. It might be posted a little bit differently. So, 
Um, for instance, I might, if I do, um, it might be a long form video on YouTube, it might be eight to 10 minutes, but it might be five ways to, you know, create a budget. And then I might put, um, it might be a post on Instagram or just like a quote where I take something that I said in that video and put it up as that way or put it in my stories or talked about it in my stories. I just finished filming this video on how, you know, I, the different ways that I do my budget. And if you have ever struggled this way, this is a video for you that can click the link right here. And then on TikTok, I might actually show my budget planner and I might be talking about it there. So it's the same content done in different ways. And so then that way, whoever's watching, it's not the exact same, if that makes sense. It doesn't look the exact same every single time. I'm huge on scheduling. I love scheduling. And I know people are like, oh, do it in real time. I, I believe if you really want to stay consistent, schedule. I will schedule out like even the videos that I have to post um, where I just showed the actual, my calendar. And I said, I'm usually two or three videos ahead. All of those are already scheduled. And so that's because I might not have internet where I'm at, I might be busy, I might, whatever the case may be, having everything scheduled just makes it 10 times easier on you. And so yeah, I will, I will add in all my tags, all my, everything is already scheduled. So for YouTube, I usually use the platform itself um, because sometimes when you use an outside platform, it does not post correctly, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for Instagram, I'm usually doing it on Instagram. Um, and then I'll do YouTube on YouTube Studio. Mm -hmm. My calendar? So I only post the month. If that, yeah, I don't post for the entire year. I usually post the last week of month, I will post the very next month, but I don't give them any more than that because sometimes I change my mind. And I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about that right now. And so I, that's why I say, I, usually the videos that I'm already t sharing with them, I've already recorded, I've already researched, I've already scripted, because sometimes I hit a roadblock. And I know if you've ever like said, oh, I'm gonna do this topic. And then you start writing and you're like, I, I don't know. I don't know, I don't wanna do this anymore. And you wanna switch topics, but you've already put it out there. And then it becomes like harder to create. So I like to have, basically everything is already done. Um, I've already done the thumbnail. I've already done the tags, the posts. It's already scheduled. They, I'm just sharing it with y'all now, but it, it's already been done. Any other questions? Yeah. Last question for you. Uh, do you, like for, I know you've made a lot of videos on your channel, right? Do you, is every video important to you? Or are some videos kind of like a throwaway? I'm gonna post today, I don't really care how it does. Or are you really wanting each one? You know what? I, I have definitely done throwaway, I'm just trying to be consistent videos. And my husband could attest to this. I promise y'all, every video, almost every video that I've been like, I'm just posting this, whatever. It does well. It always does well. I'm like, what is happening? Like, I pri every single time, I'm like, the, the video that I'm telling you that got like a meal, it is how to use your planner, um, how to actually use your planner. And when I tell you it was such a throwaway video, I only did it because like I had my makeup done that day for a photo shoot and I was like, man, I can't waste this good makeup, <laughs> right? I gotta, I gotta do something. So I was like, okay, let me just film this video real quick. 
And it was like, here are five ways to use your planner. And it did, and I was like, what? I don't even talk about planning. And it was only because I didn't have a money video in my mind and I didn't have any uh, like ideas, but I had my planner right there and I was like, I'm gonna just do this real quick. And it's one of the most popular videos on my channel. So all that to say, do the throwaway videos. Do the ones that you think this is not even gonna work because it's probably gonna be the one that blows up. It's always like that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I have tried, and I think I went to a session a couple of days ago where he was like, or yesterday, he was like, he does like six videos in a day. I cannot do that. I can't. Batch recording, I can only get through possibly two um, before I'm like, I'm just worn out. Like the lights, I'm tired of talking, my voice sounds, like I can't do it. So I feel like you have to find your pace. Um, it could be batching or it could be baking. I don't know if you've ever heard of baking, but baking is where you just kind of put in a little bit every single day, where I say, okay, Monday I'm going to record, you know, one, two, maybe videos, and then the next day I might record another video and I'll edit the first half, but it's a little bit every single day so you don't get overwhelmed with trying to do it all. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> I would say the, the first thing that you may want to do is I used to talk to my camera like it was a person, right? So, and then when I first started, I had my husband like stand behind the camera. So it's like I'm talking to him, but I'm looking at the camera and I'm like, and, and it, it made it a little bit easier. Um, the other thing that I will say is sometimes it's just the, the muscle has to be worked in order to get there. No matter how much I practice, I can definitely tell the difference from when I started to now. Like, like you just get more comfortable over time. So when I say turning on your camera in, like you're parked in your car, and you turn on your camera and you just do a quick video, you don't have to post it, but it helps you to kind of just get in the habit of just talking to yourself because that's what you're doing. And that's the hardest part. You feel like, you feel weird. Because it's like, I feel like I'm just talking to myself and I'm not actually talking to anyone. And it feels awkward and you got to move past that awkwardness. So the best thing to do is to continue to do it. Like the more I did it, the easier it got. And then when you start getting feedback, you can start acting like you're really talking to a person. You can name it, you know, name, the per name your camera, all of that. And it be just becomes easier. There you go. She said she put a picture of her best friend on her camera. <laughs> whatever it works, whatever works. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So whenever I'm record, usually if I take you through my week, usually Mondays are my recording day. Um, so Sundays I will look at my planner, look at what I kind of decided to do. I just lightly will jot down or look at my script. Um, and then I say, okay, I'm filming on Monday. All right, let's, what am I wearing tomorrow? Once again, taking out all of my barrels, barriers. I'm looking at what I'm wearing. I kind of will say, okay, I film with a G7X, my Canon G7X. So I will say, do I need to do any additional settings? Where am I filming this video? I'm gonna do it in my front room. I'm gonna do it in my office. Do I need B-roll? Like I'm thinking through all of those little things that could kind of get in the way. I film on a Monday. I give myself two hours to film. Give yourself a time limit, otherwise you will be filming all day, right? Try and push yourself to stick within the time frame. Now, it might be challenging when you're first starting out, but the more you do it, the more you'll get accustomed to it. So I give myself two hours, and I'll say I'm filming from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. At 12 p.m., I'm going to stop, 
And usually I will upload it, even if I don't edit it, I always upload right away. Because if anybody has ever had a crashed SD card, it is the worst. It will make you cry. So I will upload it right away, even if I don't edit. And then I usually edit on the next day, a Tuesday. Now, you got to remember, I am two weeks ahead of myself. So I'm never filming this week for this week. I'm always filming for like two weeks ahead, which means I already have four videos that are already out there that are already scheduled and waiting. So then I'm filming on, I mean, I'm editing on Tuesday. And then, so I'll usually give myself an hour or two hours the next day, depending on the video. Sometimes it can take longer. So I just use iMovie. That's, you know, I know some people use other more elaborate things, but I'm, my videos are pretty simple. Um, I like to keep it very simple. But I use iMovie, and then um, I always will pull in a picture. I use Canva for my thumbnails, and I will schedule it or start working on posting it on the next day. So usually that's Wednesday. And that's when I'm thinking of my tags and my titles and all of that. And it's scheduled to post. Well, not always. Sometimes I'm just reading something and I just love it. And I, if I'm reading something, reading a book, getting a magazine, um, I've seen articles, blog posts, podcasts, YouTube videos. Like, if you're always in taking content, always in take, you're going to constantly have ideas. So that's usually what I do. I think I'm going to have to take one more. Okay. So you spoke about a couple of times in YouTube. Yes, yes. Do you found that that sound like the yes. 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 So I feel like if you have a consistent posting schedule, people get used to, they know when you're going to post and how often you're going to post, and it, it just draws in more people. But is the secret to why you're getting more people at once? Oh, uh, well, it is, it, it's the best pace that works for me. And I am, I feel like you can get away with one post every single like week. Two for me has grown my channel the most. Not saying that you can't grow with one, it's just two has definitely helped my channel. It helps my audience, they just don't forget about me and they just keep coming back because it's like you're going to get it at least twice. All right. I'm going to still be around, I'm going to be in the back. I know I want to let the next session come in, but thank y'all so much.